Let me introduce you to Ettore Majorana. You may not know him, but he's one of the top scientists of the 20th century. He was born in Italy in 1906, and during his life he worked on quantum mechanics and particle physics. Many things could be said about him or his peculiar life, but let's just hear what his PhD supervisor, the famous Enrico Fermi, said once about him. There are several categories of scientists. Those of second or third rank do their best but never get very far. Then there is the first rank, those who make important discoveries fundamental to scientific progress. But then there are geniuses, like Galileo and Newton. Majorana was one of these. Majorana fundamentally worked on quantum mechanics. In 1925, Schrödinger posited the famous equation of the dynamics of a non-relativistic particle. Non-relativistic means that a particle moves slowly as compared to the speed of light. Its energy is then simply given in terms of its momentum. However, a fundamental microscopic particle, such as an electron, typically moves much faster at velocities close to the speed of light c, as shown by Einstein's dispersion relation. But how could we describe the dynamics of a relativistic fermion using quantum mechanical operators? The answer finally came thanks to Dirac, who thought long and hard about this difficult issue. Here we can see what the dispersion relation for a relativistic particle looks like. Note that the rest mass produces a gap in the spectrum. He brilliantly realized that there was a whole new branch missing in the description. If the upper branch describes the usual particle matter, the lower one corresponds to antimatter, as he called it. This was a complete change of concept. Wave functions were not scalar functions anymore, but two-dimensional spinors. Thus, in 1928, Dirac proposed his dynamic matrix equation for relativistic spin one-half fermions. Note that it is given in terms of 2 by 2 poly matrices accounting for the spin degree of freedom. This equation actually represents four complex coupled equations because of the four degrees of freedom. Solutions to Dirac equation are complex and represent charged particles, an electron and a positron, for example. Some years later, it is said that Majorana wondered about the Dirac equation and asked himself whether it could contain real solutions instead of complex ones. Well, the answer was yes, if all coefficients in the Dirac equation were chosen real. In this case, the wave function is equal to its complex conjugate. This is known as the reality condition, which necessarily implies that these particles must be neutral. In 1937, Majorana proposed his homonym equation, written here in the covariant formulation, where the gamma matrices of Dirac equation now take this particular form, the Majorana representation. Instead of having four, now we have two complex coupled equations. The solution to the Majorana equation was a completely new particle, which had to be inevitably a fermion because it was obtained from Dirac's equation. We all know it as the Majorana fermion. Among its theoretical characteristics, we can observe that its charge is neutral, it has spin one half, it is its own antiparticle, meaning that it lives at the boundary between matter and antimatter, and there are several possible candidates to the Majorana particles, but the truth is that it hasn't been confirmed experimentally so far. Majorana got obsessed with this topic, spending hours trying to solve it, and one day, at the age of 32, he simply disappeared. Nobody knows where he went, but there are several hypotheses. He may have jumped off a boat and drowned, or he might have joined a monastery and become a monk. Some even say he ran away and got a new identity, living undercover the rest of his life. Since Majorana postulated his particle, time has passed without experimental confirmation. But this state of affairs can change in the near future. Quite unexpectedly, the answer may come not from particle physics, but from condensed matter physics. The spirit of Majorana returns. In 1981, Jackie Van Rossi searched for solutions to the Majorana equations in systems of low dimensionality. In this case, solutions are not free but bound. If the mass term, instead of being a constant, as in Majorana equation, presents an inhomogeneous vortex profile. If this equation now describes the dynamics of an electron moving in a solid, then the mass term could correspond to a superconducting gap of that material. This is not a propagating solution moving through the solid, but it is bound to the point of zero gap. These solutions are known as zero energy modes or Majorana bound states. So in condensed matter physics, we are not talking about Majorana fermions, which is a fundamental particle of the standard model, but about a Majorana bound state, which is a quasi-particle excitation of a solid-state system. A quasi-particle is an emergent phenomenon that involves the particles in a material and the interactions between them. 
There are plenty of interesting theoretical properties of Majoranas. They obey non-abelian statistics, meaning they can acquire an arbitrary phase when interchanging positions. This has a direct application to the creation of qubits and thus to the development of quantum computing. In fact, topologically protected quantum computing. This is what may well bring possibilities up to a whole new level. So the main question for Majorana van State research in condensed matter physics is how and where do we find them? In 2008, Kane and Fu published a paper based on Alexei Gidaev's previous work. They posited the possibility to find Majorana bound states using trivial superconductors in contact to topological materials. By means of the proximity effect, the topological material acquires induced superconductivity, and a topological superconductor can be formed. Majorana bound states are zero energy solutions of this sophisticated state of matter. This proposal opened the door to many other theoretical works. They investigated many materials and possibilities to try and find Majorana bound states in condensed matter system. A particularly simple subsequent idea is the use of semiconducting nanowires with a strong spin orbit coupling in contact with a trivial superconductor. Using these ideas, an important experiment took place in 2012 using, precisely, semiconducting nanowires. Leo Kuvenhoven and his group at Delft in the Netherlands managed to measure the transport properties of electrons passing through a proxima semiconducting nanowire in a strong magnetic field. According to theory, at both ends of the nanowire and under certain conditions, two Majorana bound states should appear. The presence of these states should modify the measured current in a specific way, and this was verified and analyzed in detail in their experiment. The results were truly encouraging. Many more experimental groups around the world have been searching for Majoranas in nanowires, in topological insulators, and in other systems. One of them is precisely at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, where the Instituto Nicolás Cabrera belongs. Unfortunately, the scientific community does not consider the results obtained so far conclusive. This means that we will need next-generation experiments in order to claim the first detection in history of the elusive Majorana particle. Many researchers, including Leo Kubenhoven, are working hard to find it and to spread Majorana research all over the world. Something is definitely clear. More investment and research is needed. The first detection in history of the elusive Majorana particle would unquestionably represent a huge leap for physics in general and for condensed matter physics in particular. Ettore Majorana is, at least metaphorically, still alive.